Hey, my name is Cartier, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this spray paint can using Blender and Photoshop. This is part one of a three-part series where I will be showing you how to model, texture, and render fully from scratch. In this video, we're going to be modeling the base mesh of the can. This video is aimed at people who are just starting off with Blender, and I will be giving in-depth instructions on how I did every step. Now, without further ado, this is Blender. Okay, so when you first open up Blender, you should get this splash screen. We're just going to go ahead and click outside of the box to close it. And then we're going to want to select this cube with left click and then click X, enter, or return to delete. Okay, so the first step in modeling something that you've never modeled before is getting a good reference image to build off of. For this video, I'm going to be using this reference image and I'll link a download to it in the description below. Once you've downloaded it, to add in a reference image, we're gonna go Shift A, hold them at the same time, and then go Image, Reference. And then you're gonna navigate to where you have the file downloaded. Once you've added the reference image in, we're going to need to reset its rotation. To do that, hold Alt-R. Now we need to rotate it up. To do that, select the image, click R for rotate, X to rotate on the X axis, and then type in 90 on your keyboard, and then click Enter. Now that we have our reference image where we want it, we need to line up our view with the image. To do that, come up here to the rotation gimbal and click negative Y. Now we should be flat with the image. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit with mouse wheel up and then click shift A at the same time, go to mesh and then cylinder. Now we need to match this cylinder mesh with the length and height of the can base. To do that, we can use the scale tool, which is S. Go ahead and click S and then move your cursor in slightly. Once you think that the width is about correct, go ahead and left click the reference image and then click G to move and then X to move on the X axis and drag your reference image over to fit the mesh that we just added. If it isn't perfect, try scaling up the mesh again, but all we're worried about here is the width. Once you have your width correct, go ahead and select the mesh again with left click and then we're going to scale on the Z axis. So we're going to click S to scale and then Z to scale on the Z axis. Now move this up until it's about the size of the can base. And now we need to move our reference image back up to fit where the cylinder is. To do this, left click the image, click G and then Z to move the image on the Z axis. Make sure to leave some space at the top and bottom for these dents that are in the can. Now, to make the dent, we need to select the top and bottom faces. To do this, click your middle mouse button, hold and drag, and then we're gonna left click on our object again so that it's highlighted. With the object highlighted, tab into edit mode, and then we're gonna wanna change to the face select tool, which is right here. Now, with left click, we're gonna select the top face, Use your middle mouse button to rotate to the bottom of the can. And then holding shift, we're gonna left click the bottom face. Now both your top and bottom faces should be selected. Once you've done that, we're gonna click E to extrude, S to scale, and then Z to extrude on the Z axis. Now slowly move your cursor out. You can also hold shift if you wanna be more precise and then left click to confirm that extrusion. Now we need to scale these faces in and we can do that by using S to scale and then shift Z to scale on every axis but the Z axis. Now slowly pull your cursor in again. Now to make this metal lip, we're gonna wanna select the top face with left click and then click E, S, move your cursor out a little bit just about to the edge of the cylinder, and then left click to confirm. We're gonna move this up just a tiny bit by using G, Z, and then holding shift, move your cursor. Just a little bit. 
Once you've done that, we're gonna extrude again using E and make sure this blue line pops up when you're extruding, just to about the height of the lip. Now we need to remove some of the space on the inside. So we're gonna use the inset tool with I, scale down a little bit, and then left click to confirm. And then again with the extrusion tool, we're gonna click E and then drag down just to about the height of the lip. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap between where the lip ends and where this gray rounded area starts. So we're gonna use the inset tool again by clicking I, holding shift and moving our cursor just slightly. Now to make this gray section, we're gonna use the extrusion tool again with E and then go all the way up to the top of the gray section. Now to make this into a curve, we're gonna have to follow two steps. The first step is to scale the top to match the width of the top of the gray part. To do this, click S, scale it in, and then left click to confirm. Now with that done, we need to add the roundness. To do this, we use the bevel tool, which is control B. Once you've clicked that, drag your cursor out and you should see a new segment being formed. If you wanna increase the amount of segments you're using, you can scroll up or down on the mouse wheel. I'm gonna go with about three different segments and then left click to confirm. Now tabbing back into the flat view, I'm gonna use the negative Y rotation gimbal and then zoom into the top part with scroll wheel. To move easily in this view, hold shift and middle mouse button. You may want to move your reference image up to better match where we are now. To do this, left click the reference image, click G to move, and then Z to move it on the Z axis. That looks more right. Now we're gonna change our selection mode to edge. To do this, go up to the selection mode and then click edge select. Now I'm gonna select one of the edges from the bottom loop and then click alt, shift, left click to select the entire loop. Now using S, I'm just gonna scale out to match roughly where the gray outline is and then repeat the same steps with the next two loops. So left click, alt shift, left click, S, scale up, left click to confirm. Select the next loop, left click, alt shift, left click, S to scale, bring it out, and then left click, alt shift, left click, S to scale, bring it out. If you need to increase the height, get out of the flat view, and then using the face select tool, click G, Z, and then bring the top to the master can. Then you can tab back into the edge mode, left click, alt shift, left click, and readjust the rest of your model. Once you have the curve where you'd like it, go ahead and switch to the face select mode, and then left click the topmost face, and then scale the face out. For the next step, if you don't have a number pad, one of these things, you're gonna wanna go to edit, preferences, input, and then check emulate numpad. Now with control plus, either on your numpad or on the top of your keyboard, you can select the two topmost loops. Now we're gonna click S, Z, zero, to flatten both on the Z axis and then click enter to confirm. Now with both of these faces still selected, click E and then extrude up to the top of that gray line, right below the black tip. Now with control minus, we can go back to just the top face and then using S scale down to match where the bottom of the black tip is. Now click E, extrude up, left click, and then I to inset to about the edge of the top of the cap and then click E and extrude again. To finish the cap, go around to the back side of the model and then click Y on the rotation gimbal. Now zooming into the back of the cap, tab into edit mode, and then select the two edges on either side of the center. Now we're gonna use the proportional editing tool, which is right here. Left click and then click G Z and move your cursor down. As you can see, this is scrunching the entire mesh, which is not what we want. So by scrolling up with your middle mouse wheel, 
you can slowly decrease the influence and then moving your cursor, readjust and then left click to confirm. To finish the can off, we're gonna to go to the bottom of the can, left click the object, tap into edit mode, and then go to your face select mode, select the bottom face, click E, S to scale, left click to confirm, G, Z, just to move it down a little bit, and then E to add that bottom lip in. Now, just like the top, we're gonna to inset with I, bring in the lip, and then E, move it up just a little bit. Now we have to make the piece that the paint comes out of. To do this, hold Shift A, and then we're gonna add in another cylinder mesh. To rotate it sideways, click R, X, 90, and then click Enter. And then using S, scale it down so it's about the size of the tip. Left click to confirm, and then move it outside of the mesh with G, Y. I'm gonna scroll in closer to the cap, and then using G, Z, bring it up, and then G, Y, bring it back. G, Z, G, Y. That looks about right to me. And then I'm going to select the cylinder with left click, tab into edit mode, Using the face select tool, I'm gonna to select the front face and then inset using I and then E to bring it in. Tab out of edit mode and that's a low poly spray can. Now the last step is getting rid of these flat edges with the subdivision surface modifier. Before that, we need to join the geometry of the can and the extruder. To do that, left click the can and then holding shift, left click the extruder and then click control J. Now the meshes are joined. Now let's select our object and then go to the modifiers tab, left click, and then left click add modifier. Go down to generate and then select subdivision surface. I'm gonna turn the levels up to two for both. Now you can see our can is starting to look a little funky. To fix that, tab into edit mode. And then we're gonna add some loop cuts. To add a loop cut, click control R and then hover around the cap until you see a yellow highlighted loop, then left click and drag to the top, left click to confirm. Repeat this with all of your edges that look weird. So control R, wait for that highlighted loop, left click and then drag all the way down. Do the same thing with the extruder by clicking control R, waiting for the highlighted circle on this side, left clicking, drag out and then left click. I'm gonna add two loop cuts on the inside of the extruder by clicking control R, hovering around the center, left click, drag out, and then doing it again with control R, left click, and then dragging all the way in. And then work your way down the rest of the mesh. Control R, left click, scale in. Control R, left click, scale in. Left click to confirm. Control R, left click, drag it down, left click to confirm. I'm gonna add another one here under the lip with control R, left click, drag it up. And then the same at the bottom with control R, left click, drag it down, left click to confirm. And then the last one on the bottom, control R, hover on the inside of the rim, left click and drag up, left click to confirm. Once you're finished, select the mesh and then right click shade smooth. Select the reference image and then click H to hide. And now we have a spray can. If you made it to the end, great job. We use some of the most fundamental tools of modeling and I hope you're starting to build up that muscle memory. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you came across any problems or have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or shoot me a DM at Cartier on Instagram. I'm always responding to comments and DMs because my goal is to help you. I will be releasing the part two of this video the Tuesday following this release, and then part three the following Thursday. If you liked the video, please drop a like and consider subscribing. Any engagement you give helps me make the things I love to make. And if you didn't or came up with any problems, don't hesitate to reach out.
As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on Tuesday.